Justin and the Best Biscuits in the World by Mildred Pitts Walter. Ten-year-old Justin lives with his mother and two sisters. Justin's family expects him to help with the household chores, but he thinks cooking and cleaning are women's work. He would rather play ball with his friend Anthony. When Justin's cowboy grandfather invites him to visit his ranch, Justin is delighted. Justin is certain that he and his grandfather will do real men's work together, like riding the range. But Justin's grandfather is full of surprises. Before his visit is over, Justin learns a lot more from his grandfather than he ever imagined. Illustrated by Floyd Cooper. The smell of coffee and home smoked ham woke Justin. His grandpa was already up and downstairs cooking breakfast. Justin jumped out of bed and quickly put on his clothes. Grandpa had hot pancakes, apple jelly, and ham all ready for the table. Justin ate two stacks of pancakes with two helpings of everything else. After breakfast, Grandpa cleared the table, preparing to wash the dishes. Would you rather wash or dry? He asked Justin. Neither, Justin replied, quickly thinking how little success he had with dishes. Grandpa said nothing as he removed the dishes from the table. He took his time carefully measuring liquid soap and letting hot water run in the sink. Then he washed each dish and rinsed it with care too. No water splashed or spilled. Soap suds were not all over. How easy it looked the way Grandpa did it. After washing the dishes, Grandpa swept the floor and then went upstairs. Justin stood around downstairs. He had a strange feeling of guilt and wished he had helped with the dishes. He heard Grandpa moving about above in his room. Justin thought of going outside down into the meadow, but he decided to see what was going on upstairs. When he saw his Grandpa busy making his own big bed, Justin went into his room. His unmade bed and his pajamas on the floor bothered him, but he decided the room didn't look too bad. He picked up his pajamas and placed them on the bed and sat beside them. He waited. Finally, Grandpa came in and said, Are you riding fence with me today? Oh, yes. Fine, but why don't you make your bed? You'll probably feel pretty tired tonight. A well-made bed can be a warm welcome. Justin moved slowly, reluctant to let Grandpa see him struggle with the bed. He started. What a surprise. Everything was tightly in place. He only had to smooth the covers. The bed was made. No lumps and bumps. Justin looked at Grandpa and grinned broadly. That was easy, he shouted. Don't you think you should unpack your clothes? They won't need ironing if you hang them up. You gotta look razor sharp for the festival. He gave Justin some clothes hangers. Are we really going to the festival every day? Justin asked. You bet, starting with the judging early tomorrow and the dance tomorrow night. Grandpa winked at him. Justin's excitement faded when he started unpacking his rumpled shirts. They sure are wrinkled, Grandpa, he said. Maybe that's because they weren't folded. I can't ever get them folded right, Justin cried. Well, let's see. Turn it so the buttons face down. Grandpa showed Justin how to bring the sleeves to the back, turning in the sides so that the sleeves were on top. Then he folded the tail of the shirt over the cuffs and made a second fold up to the collar. Now you try it. Justin tried it. Oh, I see. That was easy, Grandpa. Justin smiled, pleased with himself. Everything's easy when you know how. Justin, happy with his newfound skill, hurriedly placed his clothes on the hangers. He hoped the wrinkles would disappear in time for the festival. Now you'll look sharp, Grandpa said. Justin felt a surge of love for his grandpa. He would always remember how to make a bed snug as a bug and fold clothes neatly. He grabbed his grandpa's hand. They walked downstairs, still holding hands, to get ready to ride fence. Riding fence meant inspecting the fence all around the ranch to see where it needed mending. Riding fence took a great deal of a rancher's time. Justin and Grandpa planned to spend most of the day out on the plains. Grandpa said he'd pack a lunch for them to eat on the far side of the ranch. Justin was surprised when Grandpa packed only flour, raisins, shortening, and chunks of smoked pork. He also packed jugs of water and makings for coffee. 
the horses stood in the meadow as if they knew a busy day awaited them. While Grandpa saddled Pal, he and Justin finished the saddling of Black Lightning. Justin tightened the cinches on Black, feeling the strong pull on his arm muscles. With their supplies in the saddlebags, they moved. They mounted Pal and Black, leaving Cropper behind to graze in the meadow. The early sun shone fiery red on the hilltops, while the foothills were cast in shades of purple. The dew still lingered heavily on the morning. They let their horses canter away past the house through the tall green grass. But on the outer edge of the ranch, where the fence started, they walked the horses at a steady pace. The fence had three rows of taut wire. That's a pretty high fence, Justin said. We have to keep the cattle in. But deer sometimes leap that fence and eat hay with the cattle. When it got bitter cold and frosty, Grandpa rode around the ranch, dropping bales of hay for the cattle. It took a lot of hay to feed the cattle during the winter months. I didn't think a cow could jump very high, Justin said. Oh, come on, surely you don't know. Surely you know that a cow jumped over the moon. Grandpa had a serious look on his face. I guess that's a joke, eh? Justin laughed. Justin noticed that Grandpa had a map. When they came to a place in the fence that looked weak, Grandpa marked it on his map. Later, helpers who came to do the work would know exactly where to mend. That saved time. Now the sun heated up the morning. The foothills were now varying shades of green. Shadows dotted the plains. Among the blackish green trees on the rolling hills, fog still lingered like lazy clouds. Insects buzzed. A small cloud of mosquitoes swarmed just behind their heads, and beautiful cardinals splashed their redness on the morning air. Justin felt a surge of happiness and hugged Black with his knees and heels. Suddenly, he saw a doe standing close to the fence. Look, Grandpa, he said. She seemed alarmed but did not run away. Doe eyes usually look peaceful and sad. Justin remembered. Hers widened with fear. Then Justin saw a fawn caught in the wire of the fence. Quickly, they got off their horses. They hitched them to a post and moved cautiously toward the fawn. The mother rushed to the fence but stopped just short of the sharp wire. Stay back and still, Grandpa said to Justin. She doesn't know we will help her baby. She thinks we might hurt it. She wants to protect it. The mother pranced restlessly. She pawed the ground, moving as close to the fence as she could. Near the post, the fence had been broken. The wire curled there dangerously. The fawn's head, caught in the wire, bled close to an ear. Whenever it pulled its head, the wire cut deeper. Grandpa quickly untangled the fawn's head. Blood flowed from the cut. Oh, Grandpa, it will die, Justin said sadly. No, no, Grandpa assured Justin. Lucky we got here when we did. It hasn't been caught long. The fawn moved toward the doe. The mother, as if giving her baby a signal, bounded off. The baby trotted behind. As they mounted their horses, Jun Justin suddenly felt weak in the stomach. Remembering the blood, he trembled. Black, too, seemed uneasy. He moved his nostrils nervously and strained against the bit. He arched his neck and sidestepped quickly. Justin pulled the reins. Whoa, boy, let him run, Grandpa said. Justin kicked Black's sides and off they raced across the plain. They ran and ran, Justin pretending he was rounding up cattle. Then Black turned and raced back toward Grandpa and Pal. Whoa, boy, Justin commanded. Justin felt better and Black seemed calm, ready now to go on riding fence. The sun beamed down and Sweat rolled off Justin as he rode on with Grandpa, looking for broken wires in the fence. They were well away from the house, on the far side of the ranch. Flies buzzed around the horses, and now gnats swarmed in clouds just above their heads. The prairie resounded with songs of the bluebirds, the bobwhite quails, and the mockingbirds mimicking them all. The cardinal's song, as lovely as any, included a whistle. Justin thought of Anthony and how Anthony whistled for Pepper, his dog. It was well past noon and Justin was hungry. Soon they came upon a small, well-built shed, securely locked. Nearby was a small stream. Grandpa reined in his horse. When he and Justin dismounted, they hitched the horses and unsaddled them. 
We'll have our lunch here, Grandpa said. Justin was surprised when Grandpa took black iron pots, other cooking utensils, and a table from the shed. Justin helped him remove some iron rods that Grandpa carefully placed over a shallow pit. These would hold the pots. Now Justin understood why Grandpa had brought uncooked food. They were going to cook outside. First, they collected twigs and cow dung. Grandpa called it cow chips. These, Grandpa said, holding up a dried brown pad, make the best fuel. Gather them up. There were plenty of chips left from the cattle that had fed there in the winter. Soon they had a hot fire. Justin watched as Grandpa carefully washed his hands and then began to cook their lunch. When I was a boy about your age, I used to go with my father on short runs with cattle. We'd bring them down from the high country onto the plains. Did you stay out all night? Sometimes, and that was the time I liked most. The cook even made supper. The cook often made for supper what I am going to make for lunch. Grandpa put raisins into a pot with a little water and placed them over the fire. Justin was surprised when Grandpa put flour in a separate pan. He used his fist to make a hole right in the middle of the flour. In that hole, he placed some shortening. Then he added water. With his long, delicate fingers, he mixed the flour, water, and shortening until he had a nice round mound of dough. Soon, smooth circles of biscuits sat in an iron skillet with a lid on top. Grandpa put the skillet on the fire with some of the red hot chips scattered over the lid. Justin was amazed. How could only the, those ingredients make good bread? But he said nothing as Grandpa put the chunks of smoked pork in a skillet and started them cooking. Soon the smell was so delicious, Justin could hardly wait. Finally, Grandpa suggested that Justin take the horses to drink at the stream. Keep your eyes open and don't step on any snakes. Justin knew that diamondback rattlers sometimes lurked around. They were dangerous. He must be careful. He watered black first. While watering Pal, he heard rustling in the grass. His heart pounded. He heard the noise again. He wanted to run, but he was too afraid. He looked around carefully. There were two black eyes staring at him. He tried to pull Pal away from the water, but Pal refused to stop drinking. Then Justin saw the animal. It had a long tail like a rat's, but it was as big as a cat. Then he saw something crawling on its back. They were little babies, hanging on as the animal ran. A mama possum and her babies, he thought, and was no longer afraid. By the time the horses were watered, lunch was ready. Mmm, Justin said as he reached for a plate. The biscuits were golden brown, yet fluffy inside, and the sizzling pork was now crisp. Never had he eaten stewed raisins before. Grandpa, I didn't know you could cook like this, Justin said when he tasted the food. I didn't know men could cook so good. Why, Justin, some of the best cooks in the world are men. Justin remembered the egg on the floor and his rice burning. The look he gave Grandpa revealed his doubts. It's true, Grandpa said. All the cooks on the cattle trail were men. In hotels and restaurants, they call them chefs. How did you make these biscuits? That's a secret. One day I'll let you make some. Were you a cowboy, Grandpa? I'm still a cowboy. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I work with cattle, so I'm a cowboy. You know what I mean. The kind who rides bulls, bronco busters, that kind of cowboy. No, I'm not that kind, but I know some. Are they famous? No, but I did meet a real famous black cowboy once. When I was eight years old, my grandpa took me to meet his friend Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett was an old man then. He had a ranch in Oklahoma. Were there lots of black cowboys? Yes, lots of them. Bill Pickett created the sport. Sorry, they were hard workers too. They busted broncos, branded calves, and drove cattle. My grandpa tamed wild mustangs, but bet they were famous. Oh no, some were. Bill Pickett created the sport of bulldogging. You'll see that at the rodeo. One cowboy named Williams taught rough rider Teddy Roosevelt how to break horses. And another one named Clay taught Will Rogers, the comedian, the art of roping. Grandpa offered Justin the last biscuit. When they had finished their lunch, they led the horses away from the shed to graze. As they watched the horses, Grandpa went on. Now, there were some more very famous cow black cowboys Jesse Stahl, they, was, they say he was the best rider of wild horses in the West. How could he be? Nobody ever heard about him. I didn't. 
Oh, there are lots of famous black blacks you never hear or read about. You ever hear about Deadwood Dick? Justin laughed. No. There's another one. His real name was Nate Love. He could outride, outshoot anyone. In Deadwood City in Dakota Territory, he roped, tied, saddled, mounted, and rode a wild horse faster than anyone. Then in the shooting match, he hit the bullseye every time. The people named him Deadwood Dick right on the spot. Enough about cowboys now. While the horses graze, let's clean up here and get back to our men's work. Justin felt that Grandpa was still teasing him, the way he had in Justin's room when he had placed his hand on Justin's shoulder. There was still the sense of shame whenever the outbursts about women's work and the tears were remembered. As they cleaned the utensils and dishes, Justin asked, Grandpa, you think housework is women's work? Do you? Grandpa asked quickly. I asked you first, Grandpa. I guess asking you that before I answer is unfair. No, I don't. Do you? Well, it seems easier for them, Justin said as he splashed water all over, glad he was outside. Easier than for me? Well, no, not for you, I guess, but for me, yeah. Could it be because you don't know how? You mean like making the bed and folding clothes? Yes, Grandpa stopped and looked at Justin. Making the bed is easy now, isn't it? All work is that way. It doesn't matter who does the work, man or woman, when it needs to be done. What matters is that we try to learn how to do it the best we can in the most enjoyable way. I don't think I'll ever like housework, Justin said, drying a big iron pot. It's like any other kind of work. The more better you do it, the easier it becomes, and we seem not to mind doing things that are easy. With the cooking rods and utensils put away, they locked the shed and went for their horses. Now I'm going to let you do the cinches again. You'll like that. There's that teasing again, Justin thought. Yeah, that's a man's work, he said, and mounted black. There are some good horsewomen. You'll see them at the rodeo, Grandpa mounted pal. Mounted pal. They went on their way, riding along silently, scanning the fence. Finally, Justin said, I was just kidding, Grandpa. And without planning to, he said, I bet you don't like boys who cry like babies. Do I know any boys who cry like babies? Oh, Grandpa, you saw me crying. Oh, I don't think you were crying like a baby. In your room, you mean? We all cry sometime. You cry, Grandpa? Sure. They rode on with Grandpa marking his map. Justin remained quiet, wondering what could make a man like Grandpa cry. As if knowing Justin's thoughts, Grandpa said, I remember crying when you were born. Why, didn't you want me? Oh yes, you were the most beautiful baby. But you see, your grandmother, your grandma, Beth, had just died. When I held you, I was flooded with joy. Then I thought, Grandma will never see this beautiful boy. I cried. The horses wading through the grass made the only sound in the silence. Then Grandpa said, there's an old saying, son. The brave hide their tears, hide their fears, but share their tears. Tears bathe the soul. Justin looked at his grandpa, their eyes caught, a warmth spread over Justin, and he lowered his eyes. He wished he could tell his grandpa all he felt, how much he loved him.